Bolt offers uh, electric bikes, electric scooters, car club and ride hailing. Uh, today we're demonstrating our electric bike and our uh, electric scooter. Uh, but actually our plan in the UK is to uh, offer all these services on one smartphone app so that we can give people the right option for their journey length. Bolt is one of the first companies to introduce a beginner mode. Um, so we have a beginner mode uh, which we introduced a couple of years ago uh, which basically limits the speed of a rider's first couple of journeys. So we know from previous studies that uh, a rider's first couple of journeys on a micro-mobility vehicle is tend to be when they have the first accidents. So actually giving them the ability to limit their speed uh, makes a big difference in terms of their confidence on, on the vehicles. Um, we've also recently introduced a test uh, which allows us to ascertain whether that person is potentially drunk or unable to ride the scooter. Um, and what we're working on is the ability to then nudge people into using one of our other services like a taxi to get home from a night out uh, if, if, that's, if, that's, if they've had a drink. I think it's really important that you understand what the city actually wants. So previously when micro-mobility schemes first launched, in particular in the UK, uh, companies just thought it was all about scale. So we saw in particular in northern cities in the UK, companies would just th throw thousands of uh, electric bikes on the, on the streets and that's actually not what the uh, local authority wanted, not what the city wanted, and definitely not what uh, motorists wanted. Um, actually, I think it's, it's more about making sure that you have the right amount of vehicles and they're deployed in the right areas. Uh, so particularly next to public transport hubs uh, or particularly next to people, uh, places where people are going to use them. I think the, the most important is making sure that you actually deploy the vehicles where they're needed in the city. Um, so we can do that by looking at our ride hailing data. So we understand where the most common pick up and drop off points are. Uh, but then actually when you marry that with the information we have from the city in terms of public transport hubs, you can actually build up a really, really uh, accurate picture of where people are hiring vehicles from or where they're going to potentially enter a city through public transport. Um, also in terms of the, 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 the fleet size, I think it's really important. So it's really, really easy to just deploy a lot of bikes or a lot of scooters in one go. And actually what might be needed in some cities is a more gradual approach. Um, so that really can only be done with the blessing of the local authority of the city to understand you know, what pace they want to, to increase the number of uh, micro-mobility vehicles. We're differentiating ourselves in the micro-mobility market by actually offering a range of products. So I think it's unrealistic to assume that everyone is going to shift away from driving or owning a private car into using a micro-mobility vehicle. Actually, what's more realistic is that they will give up a private car if they know that there are credible options available to them. And that might be a car sharing vehicle or a car club vehicle. It might be a scooter, it might be a bike, it might be a taxi option. So I think a lot of companies who are just offering micro-mobility are really only serving quite a small percentage of people. Um, if you can do it all like we are with all the different modes of transport, you can find a, a mode that actually works for different journey lengths. Um, so that's how we're differentiating ourselves in that market. The way that I see micro-mobility changing in, in the next decade is that I think it's going to become a lot more commonplace. Um, I think if you look at what the UK government has said in terms of legalising electric scooters, um, then the sector is only going to grow. We know that they're already a really, really popular, low-cost option for people to get around. But of course, everyone that's using them at the moment is using them illegally. Um, and so once they are legalised, people will have more confidence to use them. Potentially even people that you know would think would have wanted to have bought one but want to play by the rules. And so. I think that sector is going to grow, the, the privately owned sector. I also think that the, the rental sector will keep growing as well because cities are going to want high quality rental schemes in the future. Uh, if you look at the way that the, the, the bike scheme in, in London operated during the pandemic, it had its busiest ever year. But that's, you know, they're already competing with um, privately owned bikes and privately owned scooters. So I think we can be confident that there's room for both privately owned scooters and privately owned and public hire schemes as well.